We're discuss this now with Ramzi Barut. He's a senior research fellow at the Center for Islam and Global Affairs at Istanbul's Zaim University and joins me now live from Rome. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. First, let me get your thoughts on this now uh, new round uh, of ceasefire negotiations uh, that are set to take place where the two sides stand and Yahya Sinwar openly saying that we should abide and go through with the U.S.'s plan that was put on the table. Right. So I think what Hamas is doing is something they should have done a long time ago, is that there was indeed uh, uh, an agreed upon proposal that supposedly passed on from the American president uh, um, or an Israeli proposal passed on by the American president in which the Palestinians have accepted with no preconditions, with no changes and no alternations. Now, the Israelis have changed their minds about it and they kept adding new and, and more conditions that made, made it impossible for Palestinians to accept. For example, having total control over the Gaza uh, Egypt border, uh, having control over central Gaza, the Netzarim area, um, searching every single Palestinian who is trying to go back home to the north of Gaza from the south, and so, uh, so on and so forth. Israeli conditions not only towards the, what has already been agreed on, but it's complete humiliation and surrender for the Palestinians. Of course, no Palestinian group, whether Hamas, the Jihad, the Socialists, or anyone else could possibly agree to this. And Israel knows this very well. This is why they added the conditions. But the other thing that's even more important is that Israel attempts to thwart the agreements or the the the, the, the negotiations before they even take place mm -hmm. by going and killing hundreds of Palestinians in schools, whether in the Mawasi area, Khan Yunis, the latest one was in the Daraj neighborhood in Gaza, where they killed over 100 Palestinians and wounded hundreds more, mostly children and, and women and, and other civilians. And yet, Palestinians are supposed to come in uh, to the negotiations with an open heart and open mind, thinking that Israel is this time more serious about it. And so on and so forth. So Palestinians really have nothing to negotiate about unless the mediators, namely Egypt and Qatar, makes it very clear that we are not going to be involved here as middlemen between people who are being massacred mm -hmm. and people who are carrying out the massacres. But rather, we need to make it very clear that if Israel does not respect what has already agreed on, we're not going to even be involved in the first place. Let's talk a bit about the U.S.'s role here because um, they have clearly a lot of leverage over Israel in getting them to agree to any sort of agreement. It's a deal that they had put on the table, the one that Yahya Sinwar was talking about. Just give us a sense of how much pressure is on the United States to get Israel to agree to some sort of a ceasefire deal, especially now that CNN is reporting that at the school attack over the weekend, U.S. weaponry was indeed used by Israel. U.S. weapons have been used against Palestinians from the very start, before the war, during the war, and during the war with much more intensity. And everything that the Americans have done, everything what we've been hearing about, the leaks coming from Axios, Politico, even the New York Times and others, that the Americans are not happy, they're not pleased, they are telling Israel in secret, you've got to behave yourself, don't use our weapons in that way. Yet somehow more and more weapons, 2,000 pound bombs are being dropped on the Palestinians coming from the US, and new shipments that have been sent to Israel after the original uh, massacre in Jabalia, after the Ahli Hospital massacre, after all these massacres. The Americans are playing a very dirty game, and it's a political game. And the political game is give the impression to America's, uh, to Palestinian supporters in America uh, before the elections that we are doing the best we can. Um, and at the same time, do not change course with Israel whatsoever. And this is precisely what's happening. And I think one would have to be completely uh, a complete fool not to see the American strategy. I mean, I think 10, 11 months should be enough to realize that the Americans are committed to the Israeli project, whatever mm -hmm. this project is, genocidal, ethnic cleansing, Holocaust, whatever it is, the Americans are committed to it and they will continue to be committed to it until Israel itself decides to change course.
Let's talk a bit about the Philadelphia corridor because it was mentioned a couple times. It's clearly a condition that's been put on the table, a very important one. What would it mean if Israel does take full control of that corridor, having encircled all of the Gaza Strip? Right. So that's the idea. They want to turn Palestine or Gaza into a concentration camp, or rather two concentration camps, one in the north and one in the south. And that is, is a re recreation of a pre-existing plan that was known in the past in the 70s and 80s as the Sharon Fingers, which is dividing Gaza to various Bantu stands that are m much easier to manage. And it will allow Israel to ethnically cleanse whatever number of Palestinians that is demographically convenient to the Sinai Desert. Netanyahu has been trying to do so, but he is failing miserably at it. Now he is trying to actually create those conditions as part of the negotiations, as in he wants Palestinians to agree to the division of Gaza into Bantu stands that will make the subduing of Gaza uh, easy for Netanyahu. If the issue is indeed about the tunnels, and by the way, the Egyptians are saying there are no tunnels. Mm -hmm. But if the issue is about tunnels, well, Israel has been in Rafah in about, what, three, four months now. And why haven't they destroyed these tunnels if they know about, you know, the, the existence of these tunnels? They right. have been in Tal sultan they have been in Shabura, they have been everywhere in Rafah, and yet they are still talking about tunnels. What tunnels, if you have already um, destroyed the tunnels? It's about the strategic control of the Philadelphia corridor and having permanent control over it so you have permanent control over the lives of Palestinians and that's what Palestinians reject and will continue to reject. All right, Ramzi Barouj, thank you so much for being with us here on the news hour. It's always a pleasure speaking to you.